come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast. Come to at you weekly on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, wherever you found us. Please give us a thumbs up, a, hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can even give us a review. We'd be that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. That would be great, Colin. Awesome. Talk to us. <laughs> say right. things about us. Like, comment, subscribe. Preferably nice things. things. I mean, you can say yeah. mean things. Like, about, I, you can it, say it about Sean. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> if you have, like, if I uh, raise those feelings in you, please tell me. I'd like you to know. You seem to be the one that does it, too. It's really weird. <laughs> Colin breaks out the info is like, oh yeah, I've got a list of people who hate you. And he like breaks this out in the middle of the podcast. If you would like to defend Sean, please write to us. What have I done? On Facebook. Facebook.com slash Slider and Freak Show. Maybe you can uh, follow us on Twitter, write to us there. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Twitter or, is where Dom likes to uh, insult me. <laughs> Thanks, Dom. <laughs> Glad you're listening. He's Tough recruited love, his uh, buddy Sean now, who I think wants to take your place. <gasps> Can't oh, have two Shans. Oh, no. Do I have to? Is there going to be a fight at some point? Do I have to fight Battle this guy? Battle of the Shans. You listening, Sean? I wanted to invite you into my group of Shans. I was trying to get a Sean army, and now you're going to usurp me? Fucker. <laughs> once again, listening. once again, Sean is starting beef with someone again. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> and you wonder why. Uh, so we start yes. a segment as Sean's beef corner. Sean's beef. <laughs> so we know who Sean beef is. Corner. Yeah, Sean's beef corner. <laughs> who are the rest of us? Michaela, Holly, and I'm Colin. I'm Dorkwood. <laughs> and, and tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Sean. I was going to say what? Dorkwood. 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 <laughs> Dorkwood. What did we watch today? <laughs> uh, we watched 1988's Fright Night Part 2. Oh, Jack? I'm glad you made that distinction. 1988's and not, yes. uh, what is it, 2016? 20... Not Fright 20, Night Part 2? Yeah. Yeah. Is that Part 2 or is it just Fright Night 2? It's just 2. Fright Night 2. Okay. Is yeah. it Fright Night? Okay. This Friday is Part two. 2. That one's 2. Okay. Yeah. So the distinction being the one we watched is the sequel to the original 1985 the Fright classic Night. Classic 85 Fright Night. And the other one is the remake of the remake of the 1985 Fright Correct. Night. Correct. Right. They just called it two. They just called it two, but it's, it's a, a remake. It's, yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. Jesus. I know, right? So we should also tell you that, believe it or not, on this show, we did review the original Fright Night. Oh, but what? it's buried. Is that one of the early, early? No, like... you were there because it was our <laughs> drive-in. It was our drive-in <laughs> episode. We did. We went to the drive-in, and Fright Night was one of four right. movies that we saw. We reviewed them all kind of in like this little. So you can go back, That's find like drive-in Terrorathon or whatever the hell the the uh, yeah, episode like was called. Three years ago, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. you did like multiple movies in in one episode. Yeah, whatever the show that night. What was it? That How night? long was it? Like Fright. It was a short one. It was Death Race 2000, yeah. was it? Fright was Night. Uh, Friday the 13th Part 7. seven. Uh, and then God. I think you guys stayed for whatever the hell the last movie was, so I don't was know. Was it the last one, Barn of the Naked Dead? It might have been. I didn't stay for that one. I think Travis and uh, Brent stayed for that oh, one. Oh, okay. And yeah. I don't think they uh, uh, enjoyed that decision. <laughs> I mean, you'd think a movie called Barn of the Naked Dead, you'd get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah. But apparently Either it was for a misleading the, title. You have a barn fetish, a naked fetish, or a dead fetish. And yeah. one of those or all three. <laughs> or all three, and it's your I ultimate mean, movie. Yeah. yeah, There's one guy at that drive-in just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Barn of the Naked Dead. He was very happy to be there. Yeah. This fills every quota. <laughs> all right, George, sit down. Yeah. So yeah, you can go get back, get the go back and get the uh, capsule review. Yeah, very night. brief fright night before we move into fright night part two. So this mm-hmm. is uh, this came out in 1988, as you said. This yes. is directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who we know from. We know him from our my last pick, the uh, It miniseries, uh, also Halloween three. Oh, I mean, uh, I know. yay! Yeah, no, <laughs> no, not yay, but yeah, he did it. Yes, he did it. Yeah, but uh, like, wait, what? We're talking huh? <laughs> like, like yeah, yeah, he directed that, but he, yeah, no, yes, but, but no, it. that movie exists. Yeah, but I think we all the movie. Yeah. Yes. Was, we all fell on the contrary to popular opinion that Halloween three is somehow an undiscovered masterpiece. Like, no, no, no. no, no I don't know no. who those people no, are. No, I don't I want don't, to know uh, them. That's, that's some weirdness. Uh, what else? 
He was also um, Michael Myers in the closet scene in the original that's Halloween. That's very true. Um, did he do any uh, I think he Stephen did a, King? I think it was the... Tommy Noggers or was it Langoliers? It was one of those two, yeah. No, it was I one of those. Call which one. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been kicking around for a little bit. So yeah, he's been doing some stuff. Except so, that deep voice. Well, Friday Night Part Sippy. 2... Um, uh, I think a lot of people, I don't know, horror fans know this movie exists, right? Yeah. I think, uh, Michaela and Holly, you had not seen this before. Had Correct. Not. I was surprised. Yeah. Had you heard of it? Did yes. you know it was there? I knew it existed. Yeah, I knew it existed. just hadn't made it. I didn't see the point. It's not yeah, a movie that, same. <laughs> that gets a lot of attention because, I mean, when it first came out, it was kind of dumped in theaters. Like, this was just kind of put out there and then taken off and shoved away real quick. You said you looked up how many theaters it played in? I think 148 theaters. Oh, yeah. This, this was in. Yeah, That's, they really yeah. like, there was, uh, obviously, after the popularity of Fright Night, like, they were immediately going into, like, let's make a sequel. Like, this is a no-brainer. This made a lot of money. Critics liked it. Let's make a sequel to this. So, they started writing the script. Um, apparently, at the time, at Columbia, there was a regime change. All the executives and everything, a new team came in, and they just started dumping projects. They're like, we're not doing this, we're not doing this, we're not doing this. And Fright Night Part 2, for some reason, was one of those. They're like, we're going to pay as little attention to this as possible. So we're just going to... Uh, it's going out there. So we're just going to cut the budget. Uh, Tom Holland's not available. He's off making other movies. Maybe... Uh, maybe Child's Play. Child's Play at this point. Same That's year. also why... Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's also why... Uh, What's-his-name isn't available as well. Chris Sarandon. Chris Sarandon's not mm-hmm. available. So those two are off doing that. Um, I think Amanda Beers is in uh, Married with Children at this point. Or getting... Maybe not. Yeah, is maybe. that 90s? No, I or think late so. 80s? I think yeah, it late I, think, 80s. I think it started late 80s. Yeah. So it might have been around, yeah, around mm-hmm. now. So a lot of the people aren't available. Um, the script, the first script that they went through, apparently the first version was a little too campy, uh, a little too much. So they had, there's multiple writers on this one. Um, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace was one of the writers. Who else? So we're uh, assuming he did the final pass? I, probably. That's what I'm guessing. You know, I've seen this movie before. Uh, it, I don't think I've ever seen a logo on the beginning of it. It's always like the Vista Corporation presents, which always kind of blew me away that you'd go from a studio, you know, backed big budget movie, right. Fright Night, to like direct to, you know, I didn't go direct to video because I have, a, it feels like I saw the ad for this in my local paper. Yeah. Like back in 1988. The white ad. But there was no promo. I mean, it was one of those things like, what? There's a Fright Night Part 2. Like, yeah. I had no idea. And I guess it had been covered in Fangoria or something, obviously. I but can imagine it would have been. <clears throat> yeah. I think I caught up with that later. So it was like, oh, wait. And then it was on video before you knew it. Yeah. Yeah, they dumped oh. it quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but written by, like I said, Tommy Lee Wallace was one of them. Um, Miguel Tejada Flores, which you might know because he's written some other things, too. Revenge of the Nerds. Huh. Screamers. Anybody seen Screamers? No. Nope. I mean, oh, the the one with Peter Weller? Yeah. Uh, no, but should I? Oh, you haven't seen it? No. Nope. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> future pick. There? Future freak show pick, maybe. Josh Brolin? I don't think Brolin's in it. Yeah, I could I be wrong. I haven't seen it in a while, but that's a movie that creeped me out as a as a younger person. I might have to bring that one. That one's actually not bad from what I remember. I watched it recently. From uh, what he remembers. Uh, from what, uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's always the thing. From what I remember, this was good. And then we bring it here. Uh, also a writer of The Lion King. Oh, shit. Wow. Huh. So, like, he wrote some shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then Frankenstein's the Army. So, <laughs> Oh, that was a good movie. So he goes up. Oh, was it? Yeah. So he goes up and down, and he's all over the place. Uh, one of the other writers was Tim Metcalf. He has written, like, uh, California with a K. Oh, uh, Ooh, yeah. that, that's good uh, movie. The Haunting in Connecticut. He was also uh, one of the writers of Red Bed to the Nerds. Yeah. Uh, ooh, Iron Maze, The 44 Minutes, Bones, that classic uh, Snoop Dogg Snoop? movie. Yeah. Oh. No, <laughs> yeah. So you're saying it's, it's a pedigree uh, a project, Fright Night Part 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some <laughs> well, I was surprised, hefty writing. Yeah, but it had like a decent lines. budget, I thought, in this. I mean, watching it, you know, some of the yeah. special effects, I'm like, you know, the sets... Yeah, the cinematography. I'm like, some of the it effects was cut surprised down. me. They really did. That's mm-hmm. how good they were. How bad they were. The, I, they weren't as bad as I thought they'd be. They yeah. looked expensive. I guess yeah. is what yeah. yeah. would be the that's, best way to describe. That's a good it. way. Yeah. Good way like, to put they it. look expensive, but they're not necessarily done with like a flare. Yeah, or, yes, uh, a that's create, exactly you know, right. The, the idea themselves were right. Uh, mm-hmm. Even up to par with what was it, Richard Edlund? Mm-hmm. Well, he did the visual effects of the first one. Yes. Who did the makeup? I can't remember. Oh, oh it was Greg? Was it Greg Cannon? No. Um, was it all no, the known all the other people? Vampires. Jesus, uh, the same people that worked on uh, Child's Play and all that stuff. You know the people. 
those yeah. people. But they were able to retain you know both <laughs> William Ragsdale, yes. important, Charlie Brewster, back for the sequel. Yeah. Roddy McDowell. Maybe he shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> back, well, you got to have like Charlie and yeah. Peter Vincent, right? Right. Because I think like That's in like the comic core. book series, you know, there was a comic book yeah. series. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the two of them. And I think Evil Ed also like would pop up, you from, know, from time to time as a villain. Yeah. I like that idea of those two is like at a certain point, they're just not scared anymore. They just go off on adventures, killing vampires. Right. Yeah. I like that idea. Was there a cartoon? There should have been. Like a Saturday morning cartoon? It feels like... No, there probably wasn't. It but you could, it, right? That'd be awesome. I, Charlie well, Are they Peter killing animated. things? Yeah, they just go after different monsters every week. And they're just killing them? Yeah. Like blood spurting everywhere? Like we'd, yeah. Or we'd make this... Well, like, you'd probably make it for kid kids. this down, but, like yeah. Ghostbusters. What Saturday morning that. cartoon channel would that be on, Colin? Well, the same one with Ghostbusters. Like You think so? Yeah. Blood spurting? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's Sean saying, but we'd, we'd tone it down. But <laughs> <laughs> we'd tone it down. They also retained... The services of the electric violin man himself, Brad Fidel. Yes. Thank God. Yeah. Oh, so we yes. got more more electric violin and the dum 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 dum. It helps. It helps this movie a lot. I'd say mm-hmm. it doesn't sound entirely too different from the first one, but I, that's kind of what they were going for. Uh, I think after the backlash of making Halloween three, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace didn't want to like go outside. The parameters of what a what the Fright Night movie was going to be because he you know he was a little nervous about that because of everybody you know kind of blaming him for what turned out to be Halloween three mm-hmm. and the backlash from that so he kind of stayed in those parameters so it's nice that they brought him back and there was the a sound. there was a reprise of the uh, the Come to Me theme uh, from the first Fright Night only this time with lyrics boom. I know you've always wanted to hear that, end? but yeah, oh, yeah, the end credits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which Holly and I watched the credits oh, yeah. and we were curious about that. The lady singing it is called Deborah Holland, is her name? We're like possibly, oh, possibly related we to Tom Googled Holland? Her, maybe? We Googled it and we couldn't find a direct connection, but, but there's got to be some nepotism happening here, right? Sure. Like, there's no way that that's just a coincidence. We'll like, say yes. I, yes. Would, I would think that he's like, yeah, <laughs> why you can, not? No I would one's going to tell us differently. Yeah, right. yeah. I would think he'd be like, yeah, you can use my characters, but here's my wife, and man, can she sing? Here's my wife. Well, she does that a better life. job than Brad Fidel himself, who sings the lyrics on the soundtrack album to the original Friday. Oh. That's right. They did an interview with him. And he could, yeah, he had lyrics for it. That's right. I remember that. By the way, if you haven't, if you're a fan of any of these, go watch. They made a documentary. Um, you're So Cool Brewster. You're So Cool Brewster. That's a good documentary. I haven't seen. Apparently, it goes on farther than the one we got in the, uh, the Friday Night Blu-ray from Eureka. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the it may be on YouTube, the full length. It's like oh, really? three hours long or something yeah, like that. It's a and it covers one. both movies and yeah. maybe the remakes. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. But definitely both movies. But it's worth uh, worth a look. Fright Night's a cultural phenomenon. So it deserved a sequel. And it's kind of odd now watching this, you know, so many years later, like, oh, it's a sequel to this movie and it still has the original people, uh, some of them in it, you yeah. know. So what's the setup for this? What's going on in Fright Night? Part two. Part two. Well, Although, you also notice on the marketing materials, they couldn't figure out if it was uh, like a numeral two, <laughs> two or two stakes. Or a part two. Yeah, really weird. There's like, at least two different posters mm-hmm. for this movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the white one with the just the eyes and the teeth on it. That's the one I've always known. Uh, I think that was the VHS cover of it, too. Uh-huh. Um, and the uh, the one I saw recently was the apartment complex with the same vampire face as the first one, just over the apartment complex. And it says, welcome back. Mm-hmm. Just like, all right, I'd be in for that. If I saw that coming out. Um, but the setup for this one is it's three years later after the events of Fright Night. Charlie has apparently been in therapy f- uh, after the events of what happened there. And he's convinced himself that vampires don't exist. That uh, Jerry Dandridge was just a serial killer and a kidnapper. And that he imagined the whole thing of him being a vampire and everything they went through. I always love how they do this in movies because like, this has to ignore all the physical evidence. Mm-hmm. And all the witnesses, mm-hmm. because where's Amy in this, right? She survived. <laughs> There's cut dialogue scene that explains what happened to what? Amy. What? Is there? There is. Do uh, tell. Apparently, she's, uh, Charlie explains what happens. Like, they dated for a while, and then she started dating other men, other older men, all of them who uh, had some passing resemblance to Jerry Dandridge. And then she went off and married one of them and just went away. Whoa. So apparently her fascination with Jerry Dandridge never fully left her. She was kind of always looking for that. So hmm. that's where she ended up. That's the uh, side effect of being under the thrall of a I vampire. So. You just never really get that out of here. Yeah, just never quite goes away fully. So She's Charlie's off. at uh, college this time mm-hmm. around. Uh, and he's dating a psych major. Alex. 
named Alex. Tracy, Tracy Lynn. Lynn. She been in something else? My boyfriend's My back. My boyfriend's back. Oh, mm-hmm. fuck it. That's yeah. right. Yep. Yep. Oh, man. I like, <laughs> yep. totally like yep. blank that right. I'm sorry. That's funny because you. When <laughs> I know. Watching, when we're watching, you, you like, she's the girl from Friday Night Part 2. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you pointed out the reverse. But yeah. Oh, shit. <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry. Do we like her as the, as the girlfriend character who's, uh, you know, not given a whole lot to do um, compared to Amanda Beers? Who do we like better? Do we like Amanda Beers? Do we like Alex? Do they serve different purposes? Are they worthy of comparison? <laughs> uh, they're so. I mean, they're they're different. They're different. Yeah, I don't I know. Guess so. they're two sides of the same coin. You know, like sure, sure. they they serve similar purpose, I guess, mm-hmm. but they're two different characters for sure. I like them both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess for different <laughs> reasons. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex is prettier. Alex, well, she's very pretty. Yes. I mean, and I mean, she has. Does she have more to do in the plot? I don't know. I suppose that's the thing that they're going to try and do with the sequel, right? Is you not invert... just the object, like kind of Amanda Beers was in the first one, or at least where she ended up later in the movie. Well, because you have to have, I guess, for you know, to, to drive the third act of a plot, you have to have like the reason why the heroes are fighting the vampire. Yeah, it's because you know they've taken someone that means something to our heroes, right? So that's the function that she serves in the first movie. In this movie, they reverse all that, where Charlie becomes the victim of the vampire, and so uh, Alex and Peter Vincent have to team up in order to rescue him. I mean, this is once bitten, right? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm I like just... once bitten. Maybe I like once bitten better. Maybe just because it has Jim Carrey and it's. I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, let's just be and real it's about supposed this. Supposed to be. Yeah. Like they yeah. were going for funny in once bitten. Mm-hmm. Should they have gone for funny in this movie? I think they did a little bit, but I don't I think, think they went far enough. The tone of this movie is all over the place. All they could not decide what it yeah. wants because to do. Because not only do we get our, I guess our core characters of Peter Vincent and Charlie Brewster, but. Obviously, there's got to be, if it's Friday Night Part 2, there's got to be more vampires. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we get, more yeah. vampires. Mm-hmm. That's what you do in a sequel, right? You yeah. Throw, you pile them on with a shovel. Yeah, everything's up. So All we right. get more vampires. We get uh, Regine, <laughs> right? That's her name? Yeah, she's Regine. played by yeah. Julie Carmen. Julie who the Carmen. only thing I've ever seen her in was uh, she's um, Sam Neill's uh, sidekick in In the Mouth of Madness. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I don't remember her. I know we've watched mm-hmm. that, but I don't remember. That's because she was written out. Sorry, I was in the oh. madness joke. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, I get it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she plays Regine. The uh, so it's a, a performance artist. Yeah. We're going to have to come back to that. Or should we just deal with that right now? That's the loosest (laughs) term you can apply to anything ever is performance artist. That's that term is up for interpretation, let alone what the fuck (laughs) she's doing using that term. It's a very loose, vague term to apply. It's like, well, how do you make like what? How do you do what you do and make money and survive? As a performance artist, she might as People, well be those guys on the, like the subway tunnels banging on fucking trash cans for, as drums. Like for, she might as well be that those people. I think I'd know? rather watch those. Guys. Yeah, I think yeah. So for too. what she did yeah. at the beginning of yeah. her hosting a frightening, I'm like, this, this is, is this it? Is mm-hmm. This is what you do. People pay you for this. Yeah, because well, she's introduced. It's like you know, she's this mysterious woman who arrives in. With so this entourage. Is, yeah, this takes place in Hollywood, and a lot of it takes place in Peter Vincent's apartment building, mm-hmm. which I don't think we ever saw the exterior of where he lived. Yeah, in the first we did. Movie. In the first oh, in the first movie. movie. I'm sorry. No. So this one gives the whole bit like we, the the apartment yes. seems the same, but now they've built out like the lobby, the yeah. hallways, the neighbors, yeah. you know, and you get to see the exterior. I'm not the sure where they itself. filmed it, but it looks exactly like Chateau Marmont in Hollywood. It is definitely an L.A. apartment complex because yeah. mm-hmm. they all look like yeah. that because they yeah. were all built in the fucking 1920s. And they yeah, just all have that look to them. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice looking. It is set I like design it. It is. for it's you know got, uh, probably based off of a real place. Mm-hmm. I would say so. Yeah. But she arrives and she's mysterious and attractive to, you know, Charlie finds her attractive and she has this entourage, which I guess we'll get into who is in that. But I guess mm-hmm. here's what I didn't understand. And maybe this is where one of the, you know, uh, the movie has like that sticking point where I'm like, all right, now how does this work? And this may be me asking too big of a question of a, you know, a, a Friday uh, of a Friday part two. <laughs> okay. So. 
he sees her doing vampire shit in front of a window, as that happened in the original uh, yes. Friday Night. So he, he gets Peter Vincent, they run over to her apartment, and the apartment's like this gigantic fucking place, and there's all these people in it, and you're like, what the hell is going on? She has a floor. On? She has a yeah. floor to herself yes. with, like, rave lights and fucking everything, you know, everywhere. Yeah. It's a vampire-themed party, and everybody's got vampire party favors, and you're like... This, I imagine, is what Colin's, like, dream... <laughs> Colin's nodding. Colin's wet dream, Colin's nodding. basically. It is, <laughs> if he just walked into this party and this shit was going on, Colin would be like, yeah! You know what I've always actually... I like the uh, the the party, like the barn party in Halloween, the Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Okay. I would like to do that. Or I the, like the in Scream 4, the barn party is actually really four, nice. Yeah. Barn party. I'm just like, yeah. oh, they're watching yeah. movies. We're, and we're, just we're just from drinking. the Midwest, if you have Yeah, 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 yeah. barn, barn party. We love, us some, we love us some barn parties. We're showing like movie clips <laughs> up on yeah, the wall. Yeah. Yeah. movie in a barn, just yeah. fucking Halloween yeah. lights everywhere, guys, a bonfire out. We the, love shit in barns. Yeah. Like, yeah. Scarecrows everywhere. It's not real. This is one stereotype that will happily be like, yeah, that's us. Yeah, all of us. Apple orchards, pumpkin patches, we are fucking in. We're in. That's what we do. It is what we do. Well, All fall. <laughs> at this party on the floor that Regina, because she's wealthy, right? She has this floor doing whatever the hell Apparently. she does, her performance art. A, you know, a party goer recognizes her and like, oh, my God. You know, it's like he gets an autograph. So she's famous. How can you be a vampire? Now, is she, is she, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is she famous or is it just one of these people's like, this girl's going to be famous. I'm getting her autograph now. He didn't, he's like 10. He's so, like she signed an yeah. eight by ten. She had, like I thought she had like a, a, a leaflet of some sort, but I didn't see that it was a picture. No, she, it was like an eight by ten that she was signing, and giving really? to him. Yeah, okay. so yeah, she's been on the convention circuit at some I point. Think, <laughs> and I think the fan explains to Charlie who Regine is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's like, what? You don't know? She's a performance artist, you know, or whatever yeah. the hell. Mm-hmm. She's famous, and she has been brought to town to replace Peter Vincent as the host of Fright Night. Seems a like a small fish for someone who's already like super famous, I guess. Uh, maybe like it's just part of her revenge plan. Yeah. Against the people that killed her. Spoiler brother. Jared Andrews is her brother. So she's Regine Dandridge. I guess. Who reveals that <laughs> Jerry Regine... Jerry was a thousand <laughs> like years <Cher>. old. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you guys get that Chris Sarandon was like a thousand year old dude? Like, I what get that he had been doing, from and doing like, it for lost a the while. Accent and, yeah. Well, he enjoys he has, his appetites are for you know the American women. He's adapted. So he's been yeah. there for a long Don't time. Don't vampires kind of have to adapt over time yeah. to be yeah. to survive? He can be a thousand you know? years old. That's fine. Yeah. Here's the thing I got on this viewing that I missed on all my previous viewings of this. Did you get the impression that her so she does when she gets the Fright Night TV show, right? Uh, she changes the opening from the crypts and graveyards and somewhere I'd actually like to have a party there too, yes, yeah, um, to That'd this kind of like uh interpretive dance number in front of a tree where sure. that's her, she's recreating her origin story. This is yeah. how she became a vampire, yeah, mm-hmm. she's acting it out. All yeah. right, I totally missed that when I was a mm-hmm. kid. <laughs> this oh. time, I'm like. Oh, she's showing how she became a vampire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it sounded kind of like uh, like With African the, yeah, the drums and, and stuff and like that. And I'm like, maybe are they from she like really you know what? It's supposed to go a thousand years old, right? Maybe. Like these people have been around since the dawn of humanity. Yes. Sean's got his hand up. I have a question. Yes, Sean. She's a vampire. vampire. Yes, vampire. Yeah, a vampire. A vampire. She's. We're all in. Uh, <laughs> Agreement on this. Well, she has fangs. She drinks blood. Yes. I agree. She is a vampire. She turns into a bat thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How is she captured on camera to be broadcast out onto TV? Oh, shit. Because I don't know if you know this, but cameras are based basically on a mirror system. <laughs> yeah. And that shit don't work with vampires. Wait, hold on. Let me think about this. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Give me something, Colin, because I don't know how this works. She's a vampire. She should not be on TV. You don't have to defend this, Colin. We can just—I got yeah. nothing. We can just, nothing you can do. We can just admit that it's a—it's an error. <laughs> yeah. Who, who would have thought you could poke holes in a sequel, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, oh, man. If we've proven everything, and this anything, one of all sequels, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you can poke holes in a sequel. She shouldn't be on TV. That's all I'm saying. You can't be a famous vampire. It's just not possible. Yeah, I don't That's, think. You, during how, how does she have eight by how does she have eight by tens? How does she have eight by ten? That's legit. Exactly. That's legit. See? <laughs> maybe she glamored everybody, and then maybe that didn't actually happen. It is shown she's that she is able stand. to just kind of, like, move her finger around and make people think 
thing. Now in so. my head, I'm going over like all the movies that have vampires that are on TV and on camera, like fucking Queen of the Damned. He's yeah. like he's like super famous. Yeah, but he shows up in mirrors. Oh, does he? Oh, oh that's, that's right. right. Yeah, you got to figure out what your mythology is. But this movie specifically Spe- does twi- the twice. Yeah, we does. got two big scenes yeah. with the mirror. Clearly, Queen of the Damned was on point, Colin. That's right. <laughs> There's no plot holes in that movie. None. <laughs> None. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you man, you really. So there you go. We just torpedo. So you shouldn't watch this movie, is what you're saying, because <laughs> the vampire is logic that doesn't all. Make That's it. Thanks for listening. Well, all right. Well, we're Regine done. comes to town with an entourage. Yes. Uh, Who's uh, in her entourage, Colin? Uh, the Night Slasher from and, Cobra and Uncle Rico. Uncle Rico. Uncle Rico. When can we talk about Uncle Rico? <laughs> right now. Rico. Uncle Rico. What the fuck and is Uncle Rico? Is he a werewolf or is he a vampire? Oh, right, right. Because he talks about, this is Jonathan Grise, the actor, yeah. who also played a werewolf in... Monster Squad. Yes. Yeah. That's right, mm-hmm. the year before. Uh, he was also in Lost. He was he, also Dylan's was drug also dealer in 90210. What up? Boom. <laughs> was he really? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, because was he, was it, not Max, what was the fucking bad guy's name? Linus? It was his dad. Okay, anyway. Um, oh, Ben, ben Linus. Linus. Thank ben you. Linus, yeah. So he talks about drinking blood. He's constantly told you got to bite around the neck, dude. That's how this is work. But he turns, he, he t- keeps turning into a werewolf fish I think thing. He's just a. Hairy it looks it has like a boar face and he like does. A, Maybe he's just a hairy vampire. But why does? But when he like turns, he all of a sudden is not wearing clothes when he turns back. Yeah. There's that bit where they have like the full moon on the TV, on the TV. and he's like all like up in his like. All right. Well, it's, all right, it's very werewolfy. This, now I don't know. I'm not. The extent of vampire lore. I'm assuming they can turn into other animals besides bats, first of all. Depends it, on what you're It depends on your to. mythology, yes. Also, yeah. in part one, Ed turns into a wolf. Yeah. So this is consistent with the... It's usually bats, wolves, mist. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, we get mist in this one. So cockroach? I'm, no, I'm kidding. So this is just fudging the lines. So this is just his <clears throat> preference? I guess he, so. He it's likes like the He doesn't want to go form. full wolf, but he's kind of, he's chosen this uh, form. Could be, could be. Because in the library, he is like full on like wolf man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's yeah. still doing the fangs and drinking blood and everything. Uh, so I, I'm guessing this is just the form he's chosen because he likes it. Right. He likes being a... But like... His like uh, humanoid personality is much more like lower class. He has a fucking mullet and sideburns, and that's how always like werewolves versus vampires right. is like portrayed. Is like the vampires are higher class and well spoken, and werewolves true. are trashy outsiders. So although, like, although they did yeah. uh, they did counter that in Near Dark, they were very yeah like trashy outsiders. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like in <laughs> Lost Boys, but like he's the only outsiders. one like that in this movie. He's You're the like, only yeah, why are these yeah. people together? Again, it has yeah. that kind of like they look colorful when you put them in an elevator together. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. cuz they're all varying heights and yeah. uh, looks. And looks, right? Yes. Because yeah. we've got the guy who's a werewolf who dresses like he's a bowling champion. Has mm. the most extreme mullet. Because right. it because his hairline goes back so far. Yeah. Yeah. That's why his hairline. Uncle Rico. God. Yeah. Then we got the Night Slasher from Cobra, Brian mm-hmm. Thompson, also yep. the Alien Bounty Hunter from X Files. I got to keep bringing that up because yeah. that's mm-hmm. the most famous yeah. thing. I don't know. Let's bring back Night Slasher. And what is he? He's well, he's basically he? the Renfield. He's Renfield, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. He eats bugs. He, he eats keeps bugs. on giving out their Latin names before he eats them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's uh, no like, one but himself. But he's like he's like Renfield bodyguard style, basically. Because he's you the, know, the like, chauffeur, the limo driver, yeah. and apparently he can it's be around. Yeah, that's basically right. Is he yeah. superhuman? He's inhuman. I wouldn't say he's like immortal, but he's inhuman in some form. I'm trying to remember if it was a Billy from the first one. Yeah. How strong, if he showed any extra strength in the first one. He comes back from the dead. Well, there's that. And then he picks yeah. uh, Peter Vincent up, which I yes. imagine, you know, a 200 pound guy. Isn't that, the, isn't that the main story in Dracula is that Renfield. It, is alive for as long as Dracula yeah, needs him. Yes. Yeah. So he's, he's the mortal guy. Who, yeah. He's you know. inhuman in some form. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the yeah, promise is before you die, be... we'll turn you into a vampire so you can live forever. Uh, right. He just happens to be huge in this movie. Yeah. He's like bodyguard style. Mm. Very big. Arnold Which I dug that. Standing. All right. Yeah. Type of guy. I just realized this movie falls into um, it's always stunning gang rules. You've got the looks, the brain, the muscle, and the wild card. (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) Is the wild card the androgynous uh, vampire? The skater? The skater, yes. Bell. The skater with the. Yeah, Bell. We find out, like, I didn't know any of these names until you look in the credits, and Mm -hmm. then you're like, Mm -hmm. Bell, who the fuck? 
Oh, Bell's the choreographer yes. for the dancing in this movie. <laughs> yes. Like, for legit. R- That's Russell the guy. something or other. He's a, he's a legit choreographer. He's done a lot of movies in Hollywood. He's actually oh, yeah? dead now. He died of cancer. Oh. But he's been a legit choreographer in Hollywood for a long time. So he's like a cross-dressing kind of vampire androgynous yeah. say, skater with a like gigantic plume of hair. It's yeah. wonderful. In with all a directions. White oh, man. Stripe going through it's it. Wonderful. Yeah. It's very like 80s Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 And the gigantic and that's what somebody claw said, nails. Just like, I want 80s Bride of Frankenstein. And put them yeah. on, and put on like, roller skates. Yeah. I know what you yeah. mean. That's what Got it was, it. right? It was the Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. Yep. Shot yep. But make him but yep. make him trans and give him roller skates. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Make yeah. him skate down a wet like somebody, college hallway. Right. Yeah. Somebody was just like, this is my dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> I get to do all these things. This is the dream. Somebody had, yeah, somebody had a very good time with this. <laughs> Yeah, right? Because you're going to go like, well, we need some vampires. What can we yeah. do to make them interesting? Yeah, we got to do something like roller skates. Yeah. And His bowling. Was not good. <laughs> roller skates and bowling. I loved oh, that scene. Oh, my God, the bowling. I loved that scene. <laughs> oh. it, it felt like they were trying to like do an SNL digital short parody of like the Grease 2 bowling scene. That was like, funny. It felt like that. The way it was like choreographed and everything was so close to Grease 2, Very let's goofy. bowl. Yeah. They, take, uh, they, they, they decide to take these characters and do... And Follow them because they have. They didn't do this in the previous movie. It was all pretty much Charlie Brewster's like experiences with the vampires and everything. With this one, they go off and hang out with them for a little while. It's like you need to get your mind off some stuff. How about bowling? If Which this is bowling. a joke that they bring up twice, right? That the psychiatrist recommends bowling yeah, to Charlie. To Charlie. So what the fuck is the deal with bowling? bowling. Right. Man, bowling was bowling. a big thing in the eighties. The psychiatrist, no. who is who is Leon Carosi <laughs> from, Carosi from Saved by the Bell, Bell. Yes. manager of the Malibu Sands Beach Club. Yeah. Yes. All right, for everyone who wasn't doing acid, Colin, it was a big thing in the eighties. I got a bowling trophy. <laughs> <laughs> do you? Yes, I do. What place? Second or third? Uh, I think our team was first. Oh, I'm not saying it, it was, team. wasn't because of me. What was your team name? I don't remember. The blue team? The pinbusters? <laughs> like, <laughs> Did you have matching shirts? Now that's a deep cut joke for a movie that I can't remember. Uh, oh, what's it going to be? She, I think it was Critters. You're making this up. I think it's Critters where the pinbusters. Pinbusters? They have it they written have, on the back of their... They have on the back of the yeah. thing where it's the pins. It looks like the Ghostbusters thing. I'm pretty sure that's Critters. Sean's just blindly <laughs> referencing movies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is why you listen to this show. You're like, oh, 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 I get that yeah, reference. Somebody out there knows what pinbusters yeah. is. I'm pretty sure it's critters. Yeah. I'll look that up later. They're like, somebody else knows pinbusters. Somebody too. else knows it out there. <laughs> William Douglas, please help me out here. <laughs> yeah. He might know. Yeah. He might know. Yeah. All right, so they go bowling. The intention of the scene is to put all of these, uh, the, the vampire crew together so mm-hmm. you can actually see how they interact or what. It's just like a, they, they set it to the midnight hour. The, yeah, the it's, yep. it's the scene I wanted in Near Dark. I'm just like, why yes. are these people, are they together? Because, yes. oh, look, they're having fun together and they just like to fuck with each other. It's the weirdest, goofiest, tonally inconsistent. It is. Well, no, because I think at that point in the movie, this is in like the end of the second act or whatever, right? Yeah. That the tone really does go like, we're going more toward comedy than we're going toward like horror or trying to treat this straight, right? It's like elements of that first script that everybody thought was a little too campy, a little too over the top, have made their way into the movie. They're (laughs) They're like, like, fine, we'll make cuts, but we're keeping that goddamn bowling scene. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Bullington yeah. State. It's like they're just like, but I like this scene. Eh, we'll keep it in there. Just yeah. whatever. What the fuck? He's going to bowl with a guy's head. He's well, he does, yeah. head. He doesn't, but it freaks him out. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. For all the shit fight. he's got to deal with in yeah. guarding vampires, yeah. a bloody head is just like, ah! you think yeah. he'd be cool with that. You'd think. You'd think. Yeah. There's also a campy scene where the aforementioned psychiatrist who becomes a vampire. I did not yeah. remember this scene. At all. Well, when he got he gets stabbed uh, with... Uh, I hate that scene so fucking much. It's well, yeah. not good. <laughs> he gets stabbed, then it's like, ooh. Uh, it's, uh, it's the scene from Buffy the Vampire uh, Slayer. That's what I was say. Yes. Like, did they it's see the this? It's the same scene. <laughs> <laughs> the same fucking scene. But it goes on for too long. Like, there's nothing worse than, like, when uh, like a comedic moment doesn't know when to stop the joke. You know, like there's nothing worse than when they take yeah. it too many mm-hmm. beats, yeah. and that's exactly what the scene does. Mm-hmm. It should have cut it off yeah. way earlier. Yeah, yeah, because he's talking. You know, the, you got to push it all the way through. Then no, 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 don't worry, I'll do it. But you're like, you know, what, yeah. he was like he complimenting starts, her. Like you're, he starts like counseling her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like he can't get over his jobs. Like, yeah. I have a job to do first. 
I know what you're going I'll through. You later. I see yeah. what you're going through. I understand yeah. why you're you won't do this. Yeah. I'll do it myself. Okay. Because he's analyzed himself. himself and he's able to get Which, through it. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> he talks after he's finally, the thing comes out his back and he's still like, oh, oh God, got it that time. Or nailed it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> and you're like, what fucking movie am I watching here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a few divergences that are just like, it was weird, man. What are you doing? It's weird. It was weird. It's weird. Totally, totally odd. Some totally weird stuff. All right. So the the other part of the movie then has to deal with like Charlie Brewster and his like uh, slow you know. transformation slash it's like a vampire transformation purgatory at this point. Yeah. Slowly getting there, but kind of not really. Yeah, because he's she's uh, Regine's coming and visiting him at night in yes. his dorm room and biting him. Or slowly drawing his blood. The basically. whole point is that, like, sh- Charlie killed Jerry. Jerry's her brother, and she's just like, I want revenge. So she's going to do it slow. Yeah, she wants to turn him so she can torture him for eternity. 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 So we get the standard <laughs> kind of. You get to have that, you know, it mixes a little bit of the, you know, the movie. Well, I guess this was in the Zeitgeist, right? This is after Lost Boys, after Near Dark. The idea that you're going to become a vampire for a little bit of the movie, except this one forgets to do the, like, What's cool about being a vampire? Yeah. It's just like uh, he's like allergic to sunlight. And he yeah. doesn't it's, like garlic him, on his pizza. Him, it makes him sick, and that's where he kind of is for the most of the rest of the movie. He's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. he gets pasty faced and he gets yeah. the dark eyes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. He starts developing a taste for women's throats. Mm-hmm. Yep, staring yeah. at them and whatnot. Yeah. That's about as far as he goes. Well, he uh, does get the, the eyes get to change a little bit in there, and the, yeah, he gets, he gets the he vampire gets some, contacts. He gets some sunglasses <clears throat> that he gets to wear throughout the movie. It's one. It's one's bitten. I'm sorry. It's just. <laughs> Did it's you ever see bad the, version of one's bitten? Were we talking about this before? Uh, my boy, my boyfriend's a vampire. Is that the one oh, with the yeah. the like locker school locker? It looks like a coffin on the poster. <laughs> yes. Okay. Did you ever yeah. see it? Yes. Is that the same plot or no? Is that something else? Similar. They're all kind of they're all, like they share elements of, there. of yeah. the movies. They're all kind of there. 80s vampire movie. All right, which one? You <laughs> know, the one with the boyfriend. He's got the he's kind of turning into a vampire. <laughs> which one? Where he's kind of turning. You mean once bitten? No. Lost right, Boys? Yeah. No. No. Uh, Fright Night 2? No. Near no, Dark? Just, can't, uh, just keep naming them. It's there yeah. somewhere. So what was the fascination with this? What is the fascination with just is it the next step of the of kind of like the vampire story or a certain specific like vampire story where you get you know you get the teens and their experiences what are they trying to say is it supposed to be some sort of it's the change the, the, the change changing? of puberty or whatever or I mean, something not, or, you know not get that with the first one are they trying to do it again in this one like are we is this just a rehash of the first one except a little more out there is it a parable for the drug world is that he, what it is? He becomes addicted. He goes to college and he gets a... Uh, you got to pull him out before he gets too is far. A, yeah. a, a cautionary tale for parents? Yeah. Like Spot- what happens to your teens as they go to by, college? Sponsored by D.A.R.E. Yes. Sponsored by D.A.R.E.? This is it. Sponsored by MAD. Drug abuse resistance education. Keeping kids off drugs. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. It's been proven not to work. It doesn't work. <laughs> but I have a t-shirt and I love that t-shirt. <laughs> I mean, we all love D.A.R.E. Let's just say. Yeah. I will uh-huh. say there are scenes of this movie where they show what co- college life, and it is like one of the most accurate depictions I've ever seen of college in Such film as. ever. Um, like it's this, not the dorm room. Not the dorm. The no, dorm. The dorm. The the indoor, bathroom. outdoor, foggy corridor. No, no. The, the the dorm is horribly inaccurate, and the fact that a college student would throw his textbooks in the shower that would never happen. That would either, never happen. Those are so that's fucking expensive. Would never have so those expensive. textbooks again. Well, no. So expensive. Well, and they're so expensive. You, he just threw a thousand dollars in that shower and so flushed expensive. it down the drain. Yeah. Is and what he did basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you wear flip flops. That's man. how that works, right? You, you get flip fungus in a book. <laughs> he has the yeah, world's shower. best like dorm, right? Because he has a shower. He's got private like a, bathroom, huge room. It's ridiculous. It's huge. It's a, it's a huge, huge dorm. He still lives in the room with the front door. He didn't have a it's kitchen. He had a great. hot plate, which is okay. accurate. That is That's huge. Accurate. Like yeah, the dorms at my it's college were like closets. Usually, like the bathroom would be like right there. Or you don't even have a private right. bathroom. Yeah. You have yeah. a communal bathroom. bathroom. You yeah. would share it. It'd be yeah. It, yeah. it might be shared with two rooms. That is oh that maybe? yeah, not maybe the one I went to. Yeah, money. maybe he's Usually got a scholarship. It's... You don't know. Maybe he's got the good housing. Maybe they donated to maybe, a building. Maybe FAFSA. 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 <laughs> That's just a loan. It's maybe not. It's just gets, a loan. Yeah, know, yeah. You gotta pay it back. Big loan. 
Yeah, so. that's Sally Mae, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. But okay, so the part where Sorry, he's yeah. the part where he's like coming out of his dorm building and he's walking across the street with sunglasses on, like not giving a fuck, and he almost gets hit by that car and he like jumps back a little bit well, he's and he keeps. Sc- yeah, but like, okay, when you're in college, the general rule for most universities, especially the one I went to, is if you get hit by a car on campus, <laughs> they have to pay for your tuition. So people don't care about getting hit by cars and will walk out in front of you any time of day because they're like, I have a final I haven't studied for fucking hit me anyways and I won't have to take it and I'll get free tuition. Is so this the plot of Dead Man on Campus? <laughs> is this what this is? I'm pretty sure it is. So when I saw him do that, I was like, I've seen hundreds of students. Do- I've done that. Dear like, Lord. that was me when I was in college. Like, I didn't give a fuck because I was like, give me out, some free tuition. You turn into, like, yeah. you ever seen those videos of, like, being over in, like, Asia where the people are just trying to fucking scam you mm-hmm. and they jump in front of your car? Yeah, yeah. And they keep yeah. jumping in front of your car? Yep. Those are the best. That and the... <laughs> <laughs> that That's and the so part where he's yelling at his girlfriend about Dracula and telling oh, her, Oh, that like, shit was funny. He's standing in the quad yelling at her about books and he sounds super <laughs> elitist and snobby. Oh, like, you even oh, read it? He's but like, you don't know what you're talking book. about. So that is the most college thing ever. But what's even more Very college true. than that is the fact that everyone in the quad is not even paying no, attention. Even. Because when you're in college, you're so stressed out about your own shit, you don't yeah. give a fuck what's happening to somebody yeah. else. Like someone could be yeah. having a heart attack in the quad, and they're like, "I have a final. I have not fucking studied for." <laughs> like so that, which to me, I was like, "Yeah, this yeah. is college. This is yeah. everything was, I remember." That was such a legit relationship fight in college. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. If you even read Bukowski, you would know. You yeah. would get me. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was so legit. In you might as well have said that. Be like, Fuck you, lit boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a book at his head. Yeah. <laughs> Nerd. So I appreciate their realistic representation of college in yeah, this movie. That yes. was funny. Everybody's Aside pre- from the dorms. Everybody's pretentious in college. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> have you read Proust? <laughs> yeah, and it's really you're really just trying to like out pretentious everybody else, you know, in college. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's also Peter Vincent. Oh yeah, Peter. The returning vampire killer from the original movie who still believes in vampires. Yes. And there's that whole thing where it's like in one scene Charlie doesn't believe in vampires, and the next scene he does believe in vampires. This goes on Peter too long. doesn't believe him. Yeah, it, it does. There's too many switches. Too many back switches. And forth. And I'm does. like, wait, who believes in this? <laughs> yeah. It's like exactly. at this point they have both seen a vampire. Right. But then he's just like, ah, it's it's not right, Peter. They don't exist. I'm just like, what get to get it together, boys. Yeah. I don't because they could have cut like 10, 15 minutes out of this movie, and I think I know where they could have cut it. The running they time more. is one forty-two, yeah. well, an hour forty-two minutes. Yeah. And you think maybe it could have been. Um, so let me follow this. So Peter Vincent is an old actor who's in a bunch of like Hammer films, yep. right, or something like that. Yep, yep, yep. Who hosted uh, Fright Night? The Fright you know, Night. so he's a late night horror movie host. Yeah, he is fired in Fright Night One. Fired from Fright Night. Then he kills a vampire and then suddenly magically gets his job back. We yeah. don't know how, but at the end of Fright Night, he's got his job back. Right. He's got his Charlie. job back through this, and then he gets fired again. This guy has a problem holding jobs, man. Yeah. Apparently, the That's same That's his one. arc. <laughs> yeah. Although, is I, it this? <clears throat> I think the Fright Night ratings dropped, and they had to bring him back. Maybe. That's why. They're just like, we, no, I'm making that well, up, he but that's what I think. had to change. I think I'll in the first one, he had to change the movies that he was playing, right? Because he kept yes. on playing old Hammer movies. Then they're like, no, you got to play. Especially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now he's just like, sadly, I'm not in this one. Yeah. And it's like, uh, whatever, something, some kind of space movie or something. Uh, they're doing some science like, fiction. I mean, that was like the first the one. Tentacle like tentacle space, Yeah, space octopi. Yeah. Which is a real movie. Was that Humanoids from Beyond the D? I don't know what they used as the. Which one? The one with the octopus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stray. I don't think Boy, it's humanoids from beyond the deep, but it yeah. could have been. We talked about this before. Octopi? Is it, yeah, octopuses? Yeah. Octopi? Octopi. It's I think like it's the, octopi. Well, I mean, it's octopi, but octopuses is... A murder better. of octopi? That doesn't sound right. That's crows. Okay. <laughs> I like a murder of octopi. It makes them seem dangerous. <laughs> a gaggle? <laughs> it's geese. A swarm? A herd? Bees? I don't Buffalo. know what a group of octopuses is called. No, we can find out. It's a school, school of know. octopi? Yeah. A school? No? An octagon of octopi? Okay, well, we're going to find out. Captain sorry. Google is on, I is on the case. that <laughs> shitty joke. But Peter Vincent, yes, Peter uh, Vincent is then pressed back into service to combat the uh, the, the vampire horde here, right? So he, yes, He's got to find his courage again, though, again. But once he does, he gets... Uh, 
sacked off to the insane asylum it's because this is what I've always sure. wanted to see is Peter yeah. Vincent yeah. going to the loony bin because he's shouting about how he's got to kill the vampires right. and we have to stop them. They're and he's doing it in a way like he should know better than to just yeah, try and... He lived through the first movie. Right. Oh, wait, no. A, no one's going to believe you. He tries to kill uh, Regine right on the television show. That would have been awesome though. That would have been cool. How was she... Did she intend for that to happen? Was she planning it? That's why she was there. And it was like, look here, this is obviously he's crazy. I don't know. How obviously, she, this is. I think we're thinking more about this. Yeah, one. I think so. Yeah, this Tommy Lee Wallace. She yep. could have known that he was just going to show up and try and kill her. But the whole thing was planned. She's got this uh, revenge scheme. Well, no, I, be- I believe that she does. But I mean, the fact. I think maybe the fact that he showed up was a bonus, and then he gets sent off to the loony bin. Because her revenge is to like, if not kill him, she took his TV show. You know how much that means to him. I know, because he apparently had to fight or something to get it, or they handed it back to him in in the last movie. Did we mention... Wait, Michaela. Captain Google, did you find out what... Yes, a group of uh, octopi is called a a consortium. Nice. What? I love yeah. that. A nice. consortium of octopi. Sounds very official, yeah. doesn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah. Consortium. A consortium. Of, yep. Is it consortium? Consortium. 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 I think okay. it's consortium. Right. I've That's never heard of consortium. consortium. Um, a consortium of octopi. Is that the next Bond consortium. movie name? A consortium could, of octopi? <laughs> could be. Like James Bond consortium. Yeah. Consortium. You're saying that because of all the tentacles and the specter thing? Okay. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> it's a reach. So here's the thing. Thank yeah, it's you. a reach. <laughs> Thank you. That's a that's like, a, like that's you reach, a reach with tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, that's okay. That's you don't have to laugh. We're gonna laugh at our own jokes. Yeah, that's for fine. the quality for us. entertainment uh, at the Saturday Night Free Show. <laughs> um, so neither Charlie nor Peter actually figures out what's going on in this movie. If you recall, there's a scene where Regina actually stops Peter Vincent in a hallway or a stairwell yep. and explains why she, who she is, why she's there, mm-hmm. and what's going to happen next. Yeah. Yep. I'm just throwing that out there. It is. And That's they- like, uh, this is the part where I'm just going to tell you what's happening in the movie. Basically. Yeah. I am Jerry Dandridge's <laughs> sister. I'm going to kill you. And Does I, that I am a vampire. Does ever go back to Charlie? Is that ever relayed to Charlie at any point? I don't think it is. I think Peter knows it. I don't think Charlie ever knows that. He never mentions it. I don't think so. She never tells him. Peter never tells him. Pretty sure he's just like, there's a vampire after me. I don't think he knows it's Jerry's sister. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. right, that really doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Could just be another doesn't vampire. Just could be another vampire. I have a problem, and I think I've always had a problem with this movie. Like actually picturing Chris Sarandon and, and Julie Carmen being well, not so much that they be brother, brother and sister, but those two characters. Right. I just I can't see like Jerry yeah. Dandridge and Regine Dandridge. No. Like I don't know. But no. who knows, vampires, they got She seems own. a little more European, a little more out there than no, he does. The only thing that ties it is, that, is when he, later on, when Richie comes in and was like... Who's she's Richie? Um, oh, his friend that shows up like twice. Oh, yeah, his, his dorm friend. That looks like he's old enough to be his dad. Friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Merritt uh, Butrick, right? Butrick, yeah. Butrick? Butrick, Butrick. Butrick. Who played son of Khan yeah. in Star Trek II. So he was college age, maybe, in 1982. Yeah, he in, 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 yeah, in, <laughs> yeah, in 1989, he died of AIDS and he was 29. So the year after so this was yeah. finally released. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. Sean, did you find out when this movie was actually shot? Uh, the year? It was like, this shot? It's like 87, 88. Okay, I thought it was on the shelf for a while. But sorry. It was, it, I think it, like, maybe it was 89. Oh, maybe that's when it came out. I think that's technically, it's labeled as 88 everywhere, but it may have been, like, 89 officially. It got released so lim- the limit. It was such a limited release that that year was just kind of, like, fuzzy. It may have been, like, 89. Mm. Shot in 88 or 87. Mm. I feel like it was shot in 87. Okay, then. We're going to go with that. We're going to assume that it was shot, sat on a shelf for two years. You know why? Were you so saying something else? else? Oh, yeah. Um, Richie comes in. First of all, he's like, oh, you're still alive? He's like, yeah, I'm still alive, which just makes the point very obvious that it doesn't matter that Richie's there at all. But... He comes in and he's like, "Oh, she's really mad at you." I don't. And he says something about it, but other than that, I don't think it's ever mentioned to him. I think that's the only moment that 
it's implied at all that she has uh, a plot right. against yeah. him. Yeah, because Charlie's basically in a daze for this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Charlie never seduce. asks. Like, he no, never yeah. wonders why. Yeah, He's like, well, I've had a vampire thing before. It wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. You know? I always figure, you know, when a vampire is after you and wants to torture you, the first thing they're going to do is, you know, sexy vampire is going to take you back and bathe you in uh, the hot <laughs> bath, you know, while explaining that, oh, it's going to be torture. What am I going to do? It's going to be torture. Whatever. Uh... So then we get to basically the part of this movie that we were really looking forward to, where each one of the vampires gets meets their maker mm. mm-hmm. in spectacular, melty, gooey special effects uh, showdowns. That's what you want. You want you want gooey, melty effects. So what, what do we I got? This movie. What, what do we got? got? What's our catalog? <laughs> we got the skater. First, we have Uncle Rico. First? Uncle Rico does Uncle Rico's first. Right? first. He just gets shot and falls off a building. Uh, <laughs> wow! He does. All right, he shoots him with a I wish. I kind of wish the 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 previous fifty minutes of this podcast <laughs> had been that type of description. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's how you kill a werewolf. Another, you shoot him with the harpoon uh, from the movie and, uh, Jaws of the die. Vampire, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he goes plummeting to his death. Well, he, we he don't see like, him land or anything, right? Yeah, he lands. Oh, in the he fountain. lands in the, he lands and in the fountain. He has a fucking line. Yeah. Oh, bullseye! Oh. Bullseye, dude! Yeah, yeah. yeah. bullseye, dude! Don't bullseye, dude! Yeah. Bullseye, dude! Yeah. I kind of like his character. I know. It's I think just he's fucking the, goofy because he, he's the live wire. Yeah. yeah, him and the fucking guy in the insane asylum. He was, was trying to free yeah. Peter Vincent. He, he was interesting earlier because he kept having these like liaisons with with Alex, and he was making it clear he just wanted to date her. Like right. he was like, supposed to bite her on the neck, dude, and he's just like, dude, I'm this close to going on a date with her. What's he's like, <laughs> come on. He's like, I'm not thirsty. Like he just really wants to go out with her, which yeah. I think is kind of funny. Uh, yeah, that is is pretty good. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that stuff is thing. Yeah. interesting and funny, and it works. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Where's the movie around this that? This movie's like fucking All schizophrenic. Place. All Love over it. the place. Yeah. That's why I was really confused in the library when she shoves the roses in his mouth and it starts like smoking. Because mm-hmm. in the original... Fire comes out of his mouth. Fire comes out of his mouth. In the original book, Dracula, the, the lore is that if you place a, a, a branch of wild roses... Like, After on, they're dead. On After the, they're dead, yeah. On the vampire, like they're immobile. Like yeah. they're... Yeah, but there's nothing about like them combusting I from the roses. Their, what do you fill the mouth with roses or with garlic? With garlic, yeah, fill them, the, yeah. the, the rose I'm, is strictly just the rose branch on top. Like that's it. Because I was looking, into and this. I thought he was a werewolf this whole time. Well, so. that's also that. Yeah, I, I looked. Uh, apparently, it's also part of lore that it, the rose petals feel like acid on their skin and everything. Like this is. Oh, uh, maybe that's what they were going for. But I think that's it. I think maybe. roses do actually hurt that. All I remember like, was I, the branch from the book. But right. I mean, it's, it's been not, a, it's I, been a it's, while since I read the book. It's not from Dracula, yeah. but it is part of vampire lore. Apparently, okay. And they can't cross running water, and they have yeah. to. So there's a few things they're OCD about throwing shit in the floor in front of them. They have to pick it all up. But they have an immunity to crucifixes. She says she's built up a tolerance to it. Like, yeah. yeah. So they're playing fast and loose yeah, with the rules here. So just like, she basically before. made it sound like the whole thing is that they're just scared of crucifixes and that she's like gotten over it the past yeah. few years. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. But it works Jesus on her anymore. at the yeah. end. It, the crucifix works on her at the end, right? Yeah, I guess which turns little, into the bad yeah. form because she's, she's, she's a cruel weakened. demon. She weak? Yes, she's yeah. weakened. She's raw. She's not that shield on her out. Right. That's the thing with vampire movies. You can pick and choose what your lore is. They all. They all do. They all do. Yeah. They all do. But it's funny, be, you know, that we think that way. But the, even the original ones, you know, they picked and they cherry picked the lore they were going to do use, and that's, and that's become what we, like what yeah, we always what we go stuck like, with. Well, you should have the garlic, right. holy water, crucifixes. You know, that's the. There, I think my problem with it is there's too many. Yeah. Like, too many rules? Yeah. Or too many, yeah. There's too many things you can choose from. Like, where That's why they whittle it down. I feel like, like I feel garlic, like, sunlight, crosses, done. Yeah, like I feel like werewolves is it's more straightforward, like silver bullet. Like there's not a whole lot with the werewolf floor, but vampires there's like a million things to choose from. Yeah, mm-hmm. steak holy water, heart, steak, holy water. silver. Like there's so many different. And things. steak is very oh. loosely defined in this movie. You know, yeah. it's whatever leg. kind chair of leg. piece of wood chair you can leg, find. So. Broken. Well, isn't that that's and Duffy kind of the... shoved a chair leg into her heart? Uh-huh. Like, that wasn't in a book. <laughs> 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 that, well, isn't exist. it just like it's a, a sharp piece of wood? It's, it's supposed to be. It's not very threatening if they're vulnerable to a piece of wood. It's supposed to be ash, yeah. It's yeah. supposed to be a certain type of wood. Yeah. 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 yeah originally. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> it's well, all gotten yeah. diluted like, over time. There's no ash trees around here. It's a fucking wood. <laughs> like, hey, well, it works. Did you guys, this works too. They're like, we'll, we'll, ash. They're like, well, Paul, 
work. <laughs> I don't know. It works. With the pacing of this movie, I'm not surprised we didn't get a scene where he goes out into the woods and finds like a single ash tree and chops it down and then makes it into a fucking thing. Like it seems long on par. It be. seems on par with this movie's yeah. pace, though. Like, like there wasn't even what was the fucking the blanket? Woods. This is L.A. What was the fucking <laughs> blanket? It was just like a. Oh, it had it was a gigantic like a cross on it. Like, it's from the church. It was like a. Maybe I think a it priest, covers the altar. A priest shawl. Well, yeah. There you go. I like that. Well, which was it? An altar or a I like that. No, okay. go on. Well, altar. they didn't have the money to actually do the montage inside the church. So you just see them run into the church. And then That's they what run I out wanted. I wanted, the, I wanted the the montage getting all the ammunition. I got wanted a that. a little bit of that in Peter Vincent's apartment. Kind of. But that's of. it. So, Sean, you say this is in L.A. Well, why not give us the montage of them like road tripping it up to Big Bear and cutting down a fucking tree? <laughs> that's <laughs> like, a set, is, set to Holiday Road. Cut for this movie, not as much Well, as but its runtime is still pretty long for it a little Low budget movie, it like be. they could have cut some of the just walking around stuff. Oh, there's so many times of fucking William Ragsdale yeah. talking to yeah. himself walking around. That's yeah. half this yeah. movie. Him it walking around talking like to himself. William Ragsdale yeah. in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Like for I have sure. a problem with that character. I'm just like you're annoying now. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. get your, you know, there was a slight annoyance in the first one, but like we get what you're doing, but now you're just kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. It must have been expensive for them to get that college quad because they showed that a lot, a lot of walking up and down that quad. A, it was lovely. a bunch. It was a nice looking campus, but they they spent a lot of time there. Mm-hmm. And they had some, you know, you know the the melty vi- visual effects. The only one I really the remember deaths. that's standing oh, yeah, out right now is the was it the skater that the melted? Skater gets wrapped. Yeah. Gets and, wrapped yeah, in the, and in the cloth. it's like a translucent yeah. thing where I'm like, where's the puppeteering mechanism inside it? Because it's melting away and yeah. all around it. And like, oh, oh, they're just shaking it or yeah. whatever. But I mean, it was like, eh, it doesn't That's look too good. bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. I enjoyed it. What happened to like uh, a, like Bill, Billy melting uh, in the first one? You know, yeah. Obviously not yeah. as good as that, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. That's all like right there and everything. This felt more like a little more composite. Something was going on there. I don't know. What happened to the big uh, oh, muscle? That, that was, was gross. That, that was gross. gross. It was the worst one was gross. When his robot uh, died, yeah, that was uh, yeah. Horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible way for that for that character to go when his robot died. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> he gets cut across the abdomen and all the bugs he's been eating. Oh, uh, yeah. Apparently, he's only been eating two. Kinds. All the maggots. Maggots. And maggots. And crickets. Yeah. It was disgusting. Even though we did not see him eat either of those on screen. No, not at all. It's the all appliances, moss. like he's got like the the cut, you know. Where, yeah. So he's wearing this foam latex appliance <laughs> yes. with the cuts, which in is it. a different tan yeah. than the rest of his body. And I think he's supposed to be able to stretch right backwards, that's and he, that will separate. Yeah. The cuts. He's bent over, and when he straightens up, the cuts come. Yeah, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. So He's no. like, I'm stretching. I'm oh. stretching as far as I can as I'm going. Oh, so, oh all right, oh. we need the robot. Bring and in it's the just, robot. <laughs> yeah, it's not opening up. So then they bring in and the. Bring the, in the yeah, it was ridiculous, it but disgusting. Fucking bugs, Jesus. Maggots. I can't. I can't do maggots. Maggots or was it mealworms? I think it was mealworms. Either way, they're disgusting. But the Foley artist was on point with the bug sounds, though. Like, especially especially when he ate. That one really crunchy like beetle. I was like, oh, that that crunch sound that he made yeah. when he was chewing out. Yeah. Like, oh, Foley artist is <laughs> working overtime. That beetle, right? Yeah, yeah. That beetle was alive, and he put it. Yeah, in his yeah. Mouth. yeah. It's not a big deal. I mean, I know it's not a big deal, but that's just the cr- crunch. <laughs> the crunch, yeah, the crunch is what got. That's no. what I'm saying. Foley artist People, is on point well, yeah. here, man. You salt them. You put. Uh, I'm gonna find with that. If you want to cook me a cricket. I'll probably but I he ate that. it a lot li- like but he live ate a yeah bug. yeah just covered it oh, covered okay, in yeah. chocolate I'll eat it but not a live the bug that comes out of the because you're like mouth. I don't know where you've been cricket exactly yeah. you're unless that they was roost and like, shit for all I know our documentary <laughs> I don't know on where the Hollywood you've been animals and we have an insects <laughs> section that shows that that insect was raised from birth in some like oh could have been. Well, Animal he, rights place were just like it's been fed like leaves from well, Africa to make sure it grows to a certain thing, and then they was treated right before it got eaten on free, set. Ho- so Holly free and I watched that's disgusting free range crickets. Yes. Yeah, free range. Holly and I watched the full credits, and I did not see that no animals were harmed in this. Did you? Nope. So, I did not. Oh, shit. so I he ate those fucking bugs, man. He that moth. Oh. Like the, I feel the dryness on my tongue thinking about him eating oh, that fucking moth. He had a yeah. big his fucking tongue too. It was just weird. He like you oh see his him tongue like was so weird. It was, big. it was huge. It was a huge tongue. It was like a fucking cow, like a cow tongue. tongue. It was huge. Uh, <laughs> gross. So steroids gross. are bad for you. So They're gross. Bad for you. So, yeah. Don't take steroids. Stay off the juice, man. Yeah. Yeah. Stay off the juice. <sighs> 
All right, well, that kind of wraps up. I mean, how yeah. do we kill a uh, oh. machine? Like, oh, she's big a fire it's like fucking wafers. That's how, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> fucking this. Uh, this was like in. We were talking about like what is the lore? What can what can you use to kill a vampire? Wafers, crackers. Never, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, the body of Christ never came into it. Dry really. like, crackers. Yeah. 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 The way that you can kill the, that's the most the thing dry, that flavorless of, crackers oh, you can get. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes this, I guess, like a because it actually they actually do kill her with the wafers. Well, ultimately they place them in her coffin as you do in vampire movies that's in so the, the vampire a, can't go a, back in the shape of a cross yep and then they uh, shine sunlight through yeah. a mirror system he does down the mirror a, system like in legend right down yeah. the elevator <laughs> shaft to burn her where it's like regine just step uh, walk away <laughs> all you gotta do in is either uh, direction just, yeah, yeah. Just step back a foot but instead she <laughs> go she turns on fire and then lunges into her coffin which she knows she can't get into and the wafers explode yeah like a gasoline explosion, though. Like it's some Joel Silver uh, I mean, low level. Did you see stuff. Did Jerry Dandridge explode in the wafers like ninja stars in a future vampire? Movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to see that? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> yes, I, I do. do. Because you know what? They haven't gone there yet. No one's throwing wafers like a ninja star. I'll take that. Rather than some like shitty a, old vampire movie, I just want like to... fucking Shaun of the Dead style with the records. Something, yeah. yeah. I want yeah. something interesting and new. If you're gonna do it to the vampires, throw some fucking body of Christ. In a it. holy water squirt gun. Do it, yeah. I mean, squirt we, gun the shit out of people. Have like, we? Like in Lost Boys? Yeah, Lost Boys. Oh, yeah. that's right. They did have that in Lost Boys. <laughs> I was thinking like big fire. super soaker, well, though. He, like he, a he, he also got a backpack he, of holy he water. He did that in this. He's, 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 he's got a steamer. the Delbert. It's a steamer. Yeah. Arachnophobia Yeah, he's got the arachnophobia gun. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a steamer, though. It's different. I'm thinking like one of those super soakers that shoots like 30 feet or something. You oh. know, those really powerful ones that yeah. like the stream is so hard to hurt you. I movie, but I can't remember Well, we don't they... In uh, in Lost Boys, don't they have like uh, I think Corey Haim uses the, the gun, and then the but the kids are filling up the super soakers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Corey Feldman. Yeah, mm-hmm. super soaker, and then yeah. he ends up falling in the bathtub and yeah. Yeah. the garlic holy. So they yeah. never actually get to use it. Yep. Maybe this. I want one of those big ones with all the tanks on it. Like yeah. like get like super soaker to license something into this mm-hmm. movie. You know, like a really big one. Yeah, I had one of times. Yeah. Guy on YouTube who makes the like big ones where the trigger is like five feet big and he's got to pull it. Oh like shit! Yeah, let's, it and it squirts yeah. it like <laughs> five hundred psi. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what I, I want to see. Just blows a hole in them. Yeah, yes. I had a I had a big fucking one with a tank on the back. Shh. The word yeah, the backpack yeah, tank. I had yeah. that. Yeah, where you had to have somebody pump it for you before you could throw it. Dude, I'd sit outside <laughs> yeah. and wait for my brother for like an hour with that thing, just like waiting for him to come outside. Bro, 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 help yeah. me out. Just come pump me up. Pumping it, just waiting. Yeah, it's awesome. You gotta watch the pressure meter, make <laughs> right, sure it's up all the way. Right, and then you squirt it for yeah. 10 seconds, and then you're like, all right, pump, wait. Pump yeah. me up again. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> super Holy water, soaker. super soaker. This is kids yeah. killing vampires. Oh, yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. Well, I'd say we have to do that, except yeah, I mean, lost, lost boys. boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lost boys. All right. So, <laughs> does that uh, kind of uh, is that any stray further observations about Friday Night? So. Break, I mean, everybody, everybody everyone, pretty much gets out alive, except for the vampires. I wasn't really uh, in fear of many yeah. people losing their lives in this movie. That Happy I know they don't really have the Evil Dead character. It, it's uh, what's his Reggie? Richie. 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 Which is not the same as Evil no. Dead. He so was you off don't doing have nine the, seven six evil at this point. Yeah, there's no sympathetic character that dies. No, no that gives a little more weight yeah. in the Sorry, first stakes. one because that, that's yeah, a whole stakes. that's a whole vampire thing. Stakes. Yeah. <laughs> stakes. I made that joke stakes. like thirty All episodes right, ago, then. and nobody said shit. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna go around the room and around the table. Room table, well, either way, and Both. we the are bar. in a room at a table around the bar. We will tell you what we actually thought about Fright Night Part Two and whether or not you should check it out mm-hmm. if you haven't seen it already. But first, I'm going to answer some mail. Oh, good. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's wearing roller skates. It's probably not oh, the best idea. He doesn't look like he's very capable. He doesn't have good things. form. He I don't want him to break his no, ankle. No, Igor, don't go up the stairs. <laughs> Did he think we were doing Xanadu tonight or something? Like, why yeah, is maybe. he? <laughs> he keeps Skate asking. Skate town, USA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, be careful. <laughs> All right, well, let's remind the folks where they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Email Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Please write in if you like what Please. we're doing here or you have a comment about Fright Night. 
part two or one of our previous episodes. Uh, Jacob Kotner writes in and says, I love this movie so much. It's a perfect sequel to a decent vampire flick, if you ask me. Tracy Lind is Whoa. so charming in this movie. She is. She's really charming. Uh, yeah, that She's part very charming. I will agree I like with, her. yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, your wordage is bothering me. A perfect sequel to a decent? This is his opinion. Those need to okay. switch. Switch, that's switch those not. words, yeah. <laughs> a decent sequel to a perfect horror movie. Okay. Uh-oh. But Tracy Uh-oh. Lind, that's lovely. Yeah. Lovely. She is great. She's very good. She's lovely. I love her. <laughs> lovely. Uh, William Douglas writes in and says... Uh, Bill! He says, I really didn't like this movie back when it first came out, but recently I found a copy on eBay and I love it. I suppose that's the only place you can, can get it. I think so. Uh, there's something fun and innocent about it that makes it totally rewatchable for me. He uh, says anecdotally, this past April, before we went to see Alice Cooper and Biloxi, I had this thing on repeat probably for about a week. It was playing in the background nonstop. Nice. That's, that's commitment. A, nice. William. That's a lot. Commitment. Nice. On repeat, I'm That's curious if That's a good on that many viewings he picked up on any of the plot holes that we have. Oh, I'm up sure on. he did, but yeah, no. I know. That's unfortunate. That's the thing. That, like, unfortunately, these type of movies get worse the more you watch them. I, yeah, I yeah. So, yeah, but it might not have been. I don't think he's sitting down and watching it each time that it's it's background noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just like we all have, stuff like like we all have that. <laughs> yeah, and then you just move on with your day. Yeah. Uh, Bali Thomas 2015 says he loves part two, but part one is the best. True in most most cases. Yes. Most movies. I would say yeah. For this one, yes. And Jack Knife Off. Or no. <laughs> Jack Knife Off. <laughs> Sorry. I ran this together. It's actually there's a space. Okay. And it's wait, one, wait. not a uh wait. Jack Knife. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Jack, butchering sorry, Jack, your name. <laughs> no, no, no. You are Jackknife off. I'm like, how point. do you? So Jackknife, Jack knife two off. Fs, uh, one of the classic, class sick, uh, exclamation, uh, exclamation, uh, several emojis. I, got you. I see what you did. Okay. <laughs> sorry for butchering your name there. I didn't mean it. Jackknife Jack off. off. Thanks, Jackknife off. <laughs> Jackknife off. Right. This is why people don't, uh, you know, write into us. Because <laughs> we make fun of them when they do? <sighs> You're joining the Freak Show family. That's how you know that you've made it. Yeah, yeah. if we yeah. don't make fun of you, then we, you know, we don't us, care. One of us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Google, goggle, Google. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's find out what everybody thought about uh, Fright Night Part 2. Colin! What did you think about Fright Night Part 2? I'd love to tell you, Sean. Here's I, the thing. Please do. <clears throat> Uh, I I was reminded the last time I saw Fright Night Part 2, it was on probably a 27-inch tube TV, pan and scan VHS. Ah. So actually seeing it widescreen tonight was like a revelation. I know. I was sitting there going, uh, it's on YouTube, folks. At least at the the point in time where we're watching this. It may be removed tomorrow. I think it's been there for a while. Um, Because I think it's only available overseas in in a decent format. I think so. Um. So I appreciated like the, the the you know the the photography and the you know it looks it has a different much different vibe than the first one. Um, I think uh, you know it's a lot, it's a darker moodier movie I suppose because of the subject matter your hero is going to become a vampire. Um, I liked uh, the performances. I liked William Ragsdale. You know I think the script is the thing. You know Sean was saying earlier that you know he thought Charlie was annoying. Uh, I think that's the script and just what it's doing. But I was like, oh, I was watching it, and I'm like, you know, I like this character, and I like uh, the Peter Vincent character. I like Roddy McDowell, although there's a lot, not a lot really for him to do. Like at the end of the movie, they kill Regine, and then basically his exit from the movie is him kind of sitting up at the top. He's not even down with uh, uh, Charlie and his girlfriend to celebrate the victory. He's up at the top of the elevator shaft, just kind of like, ah, you know, and then cut to uh, Charlie and uh, Alex in the park. And I'm like, what? did we get like a Peter Vincent send off? Like we did at least in the first we one. Did, he had that, yeah, you know, a show back and yeah. it's just like. Uh, so yeah, it, that was just kind of odd. Structurally, this movie just kind of feels odd. Um, there's um, tonally, it feels odd. Where it you know facilitates between like you know cool a eighties horror, you know like makeup effects, rubbery you know monster horror, and just this kind of like comedy. Which I don't know. I, I thought it was all just falling right on its face. You know the 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 jokes were like you know. 
you're feeling stressed out. Why don't, why don't you try out bowling? And then the, you know, like you need a prescription. I got a whole drug uh, drawer full of drugs here. No, just say no. Okay. I got you. Cause that's the slogan of the, and I'm like, yeah. All right. So it was just like, it was goofy comedy that didn't really work. Or didn't commit to it at least. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like, well, then either pull back on that. It's like the first one's funny, but it feels like kind of like in a natural way. Does it feel like the first one's telling jokes? No, it feels like they're just, they're laughing at the, they're terrified, so they're laughing at the situation mm. to let off, I think, tension. I think the characters yeah. are doing that in the first one. Yeah, this mm-hmm. one's trying to get laughs deliberately. Right. Yeah. Which it's I think is, yeah, and yeah. making its vampires but it doesn't, the subject of ridicule in some way, which is like, right. well, then you can't really do that because it takes away it the, threat the threat of the threat vampire. It lessens the threat to your characters, yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a hard time, like I was sitting there going like, well, would I recommend this to people, you know, because, um, having, you know, seeing it again, the first half of it or whatever is it, as it's starting up, I'm like, oh, I remember this and like, yeah, this is cool. And I liked like the music and the setting and the seeing the characters again. And, you know, cause I mean, I watched Fright Night, it seems like a lot and I haven't seen this in like yes. 20 years and seeing like, and they're still like, look the age that they were, you know, <laughs> yeah. from Fright Night. Like this is a legit sequel that you're like, you know, digging up and, oh, um, and I mean that all that monster movie stuff goes a long way with me and the, you know, rubber uh, monster effects and stop motion, you know, when you eventually get the, whatever, the little bat in the, <laughs> yeah. you know. And the long, creepy werewolf hands. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I didn't necessarily like the werewolf makeup in this movie, but I appreciate the I idea know. behind you have, it. You know? I know. You have specific opinions on werewolf makeup. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I can recommend it. I think it, the, uh, you know, it's like you don't really need to see this. Uh, Fright Night, and especially if, if you like Fright Night as much as I do, um, this is almost kind of like. You know, it's like a bastardization of what you liked about Fright Night. It's like, well, you know, I mean, it's like I said, stuck between rock and a hard place. You get mm. more of Charlie and Peter Vincent. Mm. Uh, you get less but of you get a commitment of, yeah. to what you liked about Fright Night. Uh, so I guess I would say you probably I would rank the remake, the one with Colin Farrell and uh, Anton Yelchin as like if you want, you know, go watch that. Mm-hmm. And you can probably avoid uh, Fright Night Part 2 and Fright Night 2. So that's, uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to I'm gonna leave it. Michaela, what did you think of Fright Night Part 2? So I don't have a nearly as big of an attachment to this franchise as Colin does, or as, as probably most people do. Um, I came to them really late in life, so I don't have that kind of attachment to them. But... Um, I would agree with a lot of what Colin said. Like, I don't, I, I went into this movie pretty open minded because I had never seen it before and I don't know much about this franchise. So I was expecting to, like, prove to me a sequel can be worth it. And I don't think it measured up to that. There were parts that were interesting, but it was overly long and overly slow moving. Um, there were plot points and rules that were not explained. If you're ever going to set up some sort of fantastical reality or magical re- realism, you need to establish what the rules of that are. And this movie, as we talked about in depth, played very fast fast and loose with what those rules are Mm -hmm. and that's a really frustrating experience as a viewer especially if you can pick it apart while you're watching it you know the true test of a good written movie is it's there's a difference between when you're driving home from the theater and you're like well that really didn't make sense versus when you're in the theater saying wait a second (laughs) that doesn't match up with what you just said 20 minutes ago you know there's a big difference between those two things and we as we were watching this we were saying wait a second that doesn't line up um so uh, and I didn't like the. I, I, we haven't really decided if he was a werewolf or not. We st- we're still kind of up in the air on that. But I did not like the design at all. Like it didn't look like a werewolf. It just looked like an exaggerated version of that guy in his mullet. You know, basically, <laughs> like it just looked I like they the exaggerated his features. Grows and covers his body, and that's why he's hairy. That's kind of what, what it looked imagine. like. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I mean, there wasn't enough nostalgia or any kind of like awesome '80s rock music to make the rest of the experience worth it. Been some awesome yeah, music. there like, should have been. Yeah, like, it that would have been good. Yeah, it didn't. Ha- it didn't have a good tactile nostalgia experience. If it did, that would have made it worth it. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I think I would agree with Colin that I would put the 2011 remake above this one even. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. That being said, I know like uh, the past few movies I have not recommended. However, this one does have a pretty like it has a plot, so that puts it above some of the other movies we've watched lately. But I still would not recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Um, yeah, I, I feel like we're all kind of on the same page with this one. I, I also like you, Michaela. I came to Fright Night later 
than most people. I, I didn't watch it until I was in my early 20s, but I fell in love Damn. with it right away. Um, it's one of my favorite horror movies. I love Fright Night. Um, so with that in mind, I wouldn't say I've got the nostalgia, but I do have the love for it that coming into this, I was like, okay, I really love Fright Night. We'll see how this goes. I, I'm glad that the characters are back, um, but it didn't really it didn't really pay out for me, even though they had more they had there was more screen time with with the two of them. Um, it didn't really have that that payoff effect for me. There was parts of it that I thought were kind of fun, um, but I think we've kind of covered all. There was just too many holes, too many inconsistencies, t- too much disappointment. Really, is what it comes down to. It, it didn't. It wasn't enough. If it was gonna, if they were gonna go the funny route, they needed to go that the whole movie, um, because some of it was like we got we chuckled here and there, and you know we've had fun talking about it. But if they were gonna make it a comedy, it should have been a comedy the whole time. Otherwise, just tonally, it did not make sense. It was just way all over the place. Um, so I just didn't. It just didn't do it for me. Uh, the last 10 minutes were, were more fun. I mean, obviously, that's where the special effects came into play because there was like zero the whole movie until the very end. Um, and they weren't terrible, but they weren't spectacular either. I, I think they had the budget. It just wasn't executed properly. Um, so some of them were okay. But it just, again, it wasn't enough. Um, so I cannot recommend Fright Night Part 2. Again, I have to agree, the remake... I would probably recommend that over it, and obviously we all love Fright Night, so I recommend that, of course, but I can't recommend Part 2. Well, I think it's going to be unanimous across the board. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, I think so, because, uh, I mean, I, I'm a... You've been swayed by us talking. No, no, not at all. Tell us what you really I've been feel. swayed by the viewing tonight, because um, I, I love Fright Night. It is, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of vampire things. I like when they do some interesting stuff, but Fright Night is by far one of my... Uh, it's obviously my favorite vampire movie, but it's also one of my favorite horror movies ever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I brought Fright Night Part 2 here tonight because I haven't seen this movie in a long time. I remember being young and thinking that the movie obviously wasn't as exciting as the first one, it, and my memory was that it was a little bit more boring than Fright Night. And watching it again, probably 10, 15 years later... It's been proven right because yeah. it's not quite. It's definitely not as exciting as the first one. Um, it is a little, a little long. You need to be in here for an hour and a half and get the fuck out. Yeah, they could um, shave off a good twenty minutes at they least. They could. There's a lot of stuff yeah. like they can make things a little more clear and just get to the point and keep going. We're already with these characters. This is a sequel. Like there's so much built into it already. Like you don't have to spend time doing a lot of stuff. Get into it and let's go. Um, it's uh, it's an indecisive movie. It doesn't know what it wants to be. I think if it had committed more to, I don't know, being serious or being campy, like I think mm-hmm. it would have benefited from going for one of those. Um, I, uh, like we said, there's some good moments. Uh, I like seeing these characters again. Um, some funny parts with the, uh, the entourage of other vampires. But uh, ultimately, it's just kind of like a not quite as good version of Fright Night. Like... Nothing's quite as, like, the effects at the end, how they kill uh, Regine. Like, you get the the fire and the explosions and everything, but it's nothing like a giant bat coming down and then turning into flames and then flying into a fucking wall and then (laughs) burning up and exploding. Like, it's not that. It's not that exciting. Yeah. And this movie needed some exciting stuff in it, and I don't think we quite get that. There's some cool stuff, and it's funny at certain points, but there's nothing just like, holy shit. Um... So it's not, uh, yeah, it's not quite as good. I don't think I can recommend it. Like, I think you'll just be disappointed by it. That you, it doesn't live up to the original Fright Night. Yep. And that's a hard thing to do because, uh, to me, Fright Night is pretty fucking fantastic. So it's an inferior sequel, unfortunately. Um, and I'll jump in there with everybody else. The remake is the next Fright Night you want to watch after this one, mm-hmm. after uh, f- the first Fright Night. That's where you want to go. Um, and then you can pretty much just ignore everything else. So, yeah, I don't recommend this one. Um, brought it here tonight to see if I would, and I don't. So, it's funny that we get into this uh, <laughs> for because people are going to see this and be like, all right, I need to watch Fright Night 2 before I listen to the podcast. And then we're going to come into it and they're going to be like, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you feel different after watching it. It doesn't quite get there. There's some good stuff, but it doesn't quite get there. So, sorry for putting you through that. 
But uh, yeah, I don't think well, I can quite recommend it. It's not no, it's no, no, it's not. Yeah. We, again, it's not a horrible yeah. movie. No, it's just not a, at all. It's, it's just, just got what what comes before it is just so good mm-hmm. that it's maybe it could never. By comparison. It suffers by comparison. It just had it such a high bar I had to yeah, clear, it and it didn't never clear. Get it. Yeah. yeah. So you know, maybe you feel different about that. And maybe this offers you something different that you like as well, but and not for me. Was it a good idea, like in the first place, to try and reset Charlie Bruce? Because they do. They try yeah. to reset the characters so that they can. Yeah. Just go through those same experiences again. The, yeah. No. This movie is best viewed when you're like hungover and it's like noon on a Sunday and there's nothing else on TV kind yeah. of thing. And like, you, this you, just, and you yeah. can't reach it's, the remote. Yeah, like, yeah. You can wake up with the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a like hangover you can, movie. Yeah, you for can sure. eventually get there. Yeah, it's like they, a Sunday afternoon hangover movie. They told a complete it. story in the first one. Like, we had mm-hmm. a beginning of these characters where they were. We got to a point in the end, they'd all changed, they'd all experienced something, and An we arc. had that full arc, and it was done. It mm-hmm. was good, and to redo that, and I mean, maybe take something away where they're just like, you know, at the beginning, I don't believe in vampires anymore. Just like, mm-hmm. what? You're, I think you're taking something away in that. And well, yeah, it's point. like telling the victim of a horrific tragedy it never happened. Yeah, like, never that's happened. not... And then they try and get him back yeah. there. Well, what it's just the like could you do in a Fright Night sequel, right? I mean, like, either... So if you don't do the whole therapy thing and, like, it never actually happened, because I think that that's just a bad way to go. Because you're trying to, like you said, just get it back right. so you can repeat the same beats right in the first movie and it's gotta so, be it's gotta, it's it's the it's the, another, it's the alien to aliens like we had a haunted house movie the fright night almost kind of literally where they had especially like scenes where they have to go up to the house and it's just fucking leaking like fog yeah, and everything yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. a great thing and then in this one it should just be like coming at you it's just like alright now we know vampires exist we know this whole world at this point do you like, put in other monsters on. I think maybe you expand the universe of that maybe there should be like like in this one, we More go after a sea werewolves. Well, okay, maybe not Merman. <laughs> We're not getting into Cabin in the Woods here. I'm maybe just, not quite that. I'm just but... like lovingly staring at Colin's Fright Night poster right now. Yeah, I, don't, I yeah. love this movie. I love the original so much. So I have much. a poster on the wall. Yeah, um, I but think I suppose if it's called it. Fright Night with that logo, it's got to it's got to be about vampires, right? right? So we're yeah. never going to be able to say like it's Peter Vincent, Charlie Brewster each week off, you know, going up against UFOs or aliens. That's or, why they have comic books and I guess that's why yeah. you follow those things so you can get those characters doing different adventures yeah. and maybe that you can't get maybe that maybe they figured movie. out like a, a decent plot for a sequel but yeah but there it is alright so uh, that's uh, Fright Night Part 2 Part 2 so that brings us to find out what we're watching next week Holly what, what are we watching, watching next week <laughs> next week we are watching um, Dawn of the Dead the remake 2004 I mentioned it a few months ago, but that changed <laughs> because I want happens because Sometimes. I wanted we still never watch it. I wanted us to watch it around Halloween, so that's why I postponed it. But now it's back. We're actually going to watch Dawn of the Dead this for, time. for real this time. For reals this time. For reals. Brains, oh, no, yeah, no oh. running zombies. Zack Snyder. There you go. <laughs> so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us for Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Oh four. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.